Hey guys, welcome to today's YouTube video, and today I'm going to be talking about why Gotham Chess, also known as Levy Rosman, can be a Grandmaster. Um, this is a little bit of a response video to his video uh, where he showed his shortcomings as a chess player, but I'm going to be doing the opposite and showing his strengths as a chess player by showing a few nice wins uh, against some very high rated opponents, and in my opinion, Blitz. Uh, like, of course, titles don't matter as much, but what you can really showcase is just your raw chess talent. Um, so yeah, we're, we're going to get right into it. Um, this is a game against Dropstone DP, also known as David Paravian, uh, which is a 3000 rated Grandmaster on chess.com in Blitz. I'll be just playing his uh, opening prep still, I believe. This is probably still prep at this point, and I'm assuming about here is where he leaves prep. Um, you can see uh, Levy's still at 2 minutes and 35 seconds, which is why I still think he's in prep. But about here, he uses a bit more time and immediately makes a mistake. Um, but honestly, it's not so clear why it's a mistake. Because after takes, takes, I mean, even though computer set was inaccurate, I mean, the advantage gained is just so slim that calling it a mistake was a bit of a um, long shot. Also, I kind of also disagree with the computer here uh, that this is a great move. I don't think it's a great move because it just makes your king a little bit less safe. But then again, I'm not titled. I, I don't know as much as uh, these players clearly. But you'll see later on that uh, king to c5 does come back later on to bite uh, Levy in the butt. And it shows immediately right here after rook to uh, d3 because you have to move uh, you have to move your b pawn I believe here to make some space for your queen or you have to even move your d pawn which is a bit weird it's just saying sacrifice your your d pawn um, to get more space for your king uh, personally I would go more with b5 but I am not a titled player so don't listen to me I feel like this is a logical move just attacking the knight. But unfortunately, uh, these retreat squares are a little bit cut off, and this check comes with immense power, pushing the king to an unsafe, more unsafe region of the board where it could be attacked by pawns, and potentially later by more pieces, um, as showcased by rook to d1. Um, but Levy is a fighter, he doesn't resign, especially, I believe this might be titled Tuesday, I'm not sure of that. Yes, it is titled Tuesday, um, but he, he's a fighter, he doesn't resign, which is good, he teaches that, so he may as well uh, do it, do what he preaches. Um, yeah, he, he's a fighter, he's making normal moves, he's trying to put up some resistance, which is always good, uh, everyone should always put up resistance, and uh, David uh, blunders with low time, uh, Levy's playing on the clock here, as you can see. Uh, David has 5 seconds and Levy has 1 minute and 18 seconds. So his time management is uh, really, really good here. Um, and he's he's not even playing poorly anymore. I mean, he, he is minus 5. Um, he's up on time. I mean, he should win these games uh, like 99% out of 100. Um, I mean, this is just 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 super easy win here. I mean, and he even showcases a, a nice tactic later on. Uh, I believe at the end of this game, it made uh, his opponent resign. After check here and a push, you can take the knight to uh, free up the d2 square, and the king is blocking the rook from coming up behind it. So you can push and promote very easily, and it's just it's just clear cut win from there. So that's why David resigned. So yeah, he beat David Paravion. Uh It was a little rough, but. He, he actually played very accurately, Levy played uh, about 10% more accurately than David, and uh, Chess.com gave him a 400 point uh, rating uh, advantage over David, with him being rated 2800 and David being rated 2400. Obviously it's a little bit skewed since David was uh, much lower on time, but I still think it showcases uh, how strong Levy can actually be, especially when he focuses and puts up a fight instead of uh, falling apart. So I, what I'm trying to show is that he already has the skills to become a Grandmaster. What's mostly blocking him is 
his psychology, and I think he understands that. Um, I, I actually don't think Hikaru understands that Levy has the skills to become a Grandmaster, rather than it's just the psychology of it. Um, but I disagree with Hikaru there, I think it is mainly psychology, and it can be improved and fixed. Again, this is just the opening, that's why I'm kind of going through it without explaining that much. Um, this is all preparation done by the computer. Um, I believe about here is where uh, the world out of prep. White has a little bit more of an advantage. So. But Levy likes to play these kinds of openings where he sacrifices a little bit of uh, positional play to get some nice attacks. It's just his style, which is fitting. Yep, gives a pawn, uh, gets some space for his bishop, uh, puts it on a nice active diagonal rather than uh, looking to this pawn, which is doing absolutely nothing and essentially making the bishop a big pawn. There's the king, uh, which is which is a good move, opening up uh, the rook to come on over later on. Um, yeah, just just uh, also protecting these central pawns, which is nice. Uh, then again, he does move back, so what do I know? Again, putting his bishop on a nice diagonal rather than here, which is a little bit of a drawback of the opening, but uh, as you can see, he's making it work. Um, yeah, the king a little bit safer, and now he's doubling the pawns around the king, and he gets an absolutely massive attack with the pin on the bishop and uh, h4 incoming, which is what happens now, and now Levy will just win up uh, a clean piece against a 2900 GM. And the rest of the game is essentially just clean up. Uh, you kind of just trade pawns and uh, push to promote, try and trade some pieces. I'm just going to kind of rush through a little bit since uh, it's a bit trivial at this point. You just kind of protect pawns, uh, trade, trade, and now you're just going to go promote very cleanly. Or win a couple more pawns and promote again. And now you just yep, promote and this is just dead. Especially at a high level, this is just dead, no chance to stalemate at all. Um, yeah, I mean, he just absolutely crushed a uh, GM uh, in the opening. I mean, sure, White had a advantage technically, but uh, it's Blitz. Uh, Levy plays very practically in Blitz. He attacks his opponent, uh, gives them practical uh, difficulties, and punishes them, usually. Um, does a good job finishing them off when he doesn't get his own head. And uh, of course, I must show this game against Buddy Pranav from Chesspra. He's not a part of Chesspra, but he's a big part of their uh, community, so that's why I'm saying that. So yeah, just opening again. Again, I'm not going to spend too much time in the opening since it's mostly done by computers. Um, so yeah, once they start using a bit more time, we'll kind of kind of slow down a little bit. I mean, this is all prep. This is just very common ideas in this in this kind of structure. Um, what, what I mean that kind of ideas, I mean putting pressure on the C pawn, especially with knight a5, bishop a6. Um, and I assume around here is where the theory kind of starts to die out a little bit. Some trades get it happening, um, and yeah, I think this is where theory is gone. Uh, Pranav is a very fast player, and he's a very solid player. He has good instinct, um, and he actually recently became a GM, so he's kind of fresh out of study, which makes him a very uh, difficult opponent to face, but I think Levy does a very clean job in this game of uh, showing him who's boss and who's been playing chess just a little bit longer. Um, yeah, just showing some technique here, rook on a file that's going to open up very soon, uh, good idea. Trading on his own terms, he probably mentioned his uh, middle game course at this point. Um, yeah, just not getting checkmated, pushing the knight back, essentially wasting a move for black. I don't know what knight to h6 is. I mean, we all know the knights on the rim are dim. I don't know what the idea here is. I mean, the only idea could possibly be like knight back to uh, f6, but even then, your knight kind of sucks. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, you just win the queen now, since the queen is trapped. So yeah. Or you can just, you know, give up something else. Yeah, now we just clean up some pawns, we're up materials, so essentially we can just trade the rest of the game. We're not really worried about this discovery since we can just take, take, uh, take, and then promote probably, I'm assuming. Yeah, now we're getting out of the way of the pin and uh, putting some pressure on the knight, and 
Pranav blunders the night because of low time. So you notice they're down to about uh, five then on this last move, like uh, one second. So no really time to react for Pranav, which is why he just blundered a full night. Um, it happens to the best of us. Um, especially in time trouble, he can't really react to everything and play perfectly, obviously. But I mean, he he just made like grandmasters in this video look like absolute uh you know just regular players he, like he didn't even consider their title uh he just beat them up he played good chess uh he showcased his uh ability to play uh really good chess and i think once he gets out of his own head he'll definitely be able to become a gm like it, it's possible everyone's rooting for him he has the ability um he just needs to get over his psychology and I think it's doable. So yeah, uh, if you end up watching this Gotham, we all believe in you. You got this. Um, yeah, thanks for watching today's video and don't forget to like the video and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you tomorrow.